Hello, so in the last few videos we have been talking through how to use Tix pictures to create some professional looking diagrams, either as standalone diagrams or things that you can embed in your given work, okay? Um, and hopefully you've kind of got a good enough hang of Tix pictures to be able to use it as a starting point and then obviously you can develop it to create your own diagrams. However, there's going to come a point where you're going to be wanting to plot some graphs and in that case, ticks can do it, but it's better if you use something called PGF plots um, as well as ticks in order to do it more accurately. So that's what we're going to look at today. So first of all, um, I'm going to come onto this source code here just after where it says begin document. And just before we've begun our ticks picture, I'm actually just going to bring in some PGF a PGF plot set. These are basically some standard parameters that I tend to set that make my document look how I want it. So these are things I don't have to set every single time. These are not parameters I need to set every single time. So you don't pretty much need to worry about what these do. Of course, you can fiddle around with them if necessary. A um, few ones that I just want to point out, however, the axis line style being thick. I prefer the axes being thick and then the actual line which I'm plotting to be less thick. Again, it just helps distinguish the axes from the, uh, the graph that I'm plotting. The other one that I just want to bring your attention to is the trig format. At the moment, they're in radians. That basically means that if I'm going to be plotting a sine or cosine graph, it's meaning that I'm going to be able to plot other graphs on top of it that are not necessarily in um, degrees. OK, so if it's in radians, it means I could have, for example, the line y equals x and the line y equals sine x on the same graph and it looks right. OK. The other ones that I want to bring your attention to are these. So basically where it says here anchor equals northwest, that basically means that I'm going to be plotting the y-axis label on the top left of the axis. And I'll show you what that looks like when we actually plot something. And the anchor equals southeast is basically meaning the x-axis label is going to be on the southeast, so on the bottom right um, of the axis that we're going to be plotting. Again, you can fiddle around with those anchors and seeing what happens with regards to where the labels are positioned. But these are things that I think look nice. OK, so here's where the first difference is. Where usually we have begin and end ticks picture, we still need that. However, we also need to begin and end an axis. So I'm just going to begin an axis. And then it uh, overly fortunately automatically closes that uh, that uh, open um, axis. So, OK, next what I'm going to do is put some parameters in. So I'm just going to put a square bracket next to begin axis. And I'm going to tell LaTeX, first of all, that I want to be using this style up here, which I've called standard. So I'm just going to type in here standard, first of all. OK, now the next things that I want to plot are basically where my ticks are going to my ticks are going to be positioned. So my X ticks and my Y ticks, basically my labels. OK, so I'm just going to actually just bring these in um, just like so. So I'm just going to put a comma next to standard and I'm just going to bring each of these in. OK, so what this basically means, first of all, is that I want to be plotting tick marks at one, two, three, four. And these are actually going to be the labels of my tick marks. OK, now I've actually illustrated it like this just to show you, because if I wanted to call the point one, say something else, then I can absolutely do that just by using X ticks labels. So, for example, if I have one, I might want to call that point A, then I can absolutely just call that A, B, C, D if I want to. OK, but at the moment I've got these two things matched up. The next things that I'm going to bring in are what my labels of my X and Y axis are going to be called. OK, so if I just pop this down here, you can see my X label is going to be called time and I've called that T and my Y label is going to be called size and I've called that Y. Next thing is I want to show uh, LaTeX how many times it should sample. Basically, the way that this is going to work is it's going to plot one point at a time. So it's literally going to point when X equals, say, 0.1, Y is going to be equal to whatever it is equal to. So if I set this number to be really, really low, these samples to be really, really low, I'll end up with a really jagged graph because basically it's going to try and join lines which are quite uh, for points which are quite far apart. So by varying the number of samples, I basically smooth the graph out. I find that a thousand samples for the type of resolution that I need is totally fine. The last thing that I'm going to define then is where I'm actually going to put my maximum and minimum X and Y coordinates. So basically from X min from negative 0 0.5 to 5 basically means it's going to plot a graph starting at negative 0.5 on the X axis up to 5 on the on the X axis. And then for the uh, Y axis, it's going to start at negative 1 and go all the way up to 20. OK, so these are things that I tend to vary the majority of the time. So everything else is kind of chucked in this standard style. You notice it's called standard, which is the reason why I'm typing standard 
with there but everything else are things which I tend to vary quite a lot hence the reason why I've kept these in my parameters okay that's enough yakking let's uh, let's actually get on with some plotting so first of all I'm actually going to plot an origin on here so I'm just going to bring this uh, this origin in here so I'm going to type a node okay and I'm going to put the anchor of that node at the center and I'm going to put the label of that node on the southwest of that anchor so south west like so and the node is going to be the origin so I'm just going to call that O okay now I'm going to pop that at and this is where it's a little bit different because I'm using the axis um, part of the PGF plots I actually need to use a uh, command called axis CS so whereas in late it was in ticks I could get away with just typing the coordinates 0 0 which is where I want the origin to be in this case because I'm using the axis package I actually need to tell it it's a coordinate so I'm going to go axis CS and then colon and then 0 0 okay so it's a little bit different to what we're using with ticks but hopefully you can kind of see how those two things match up basically because I'm actually plotting a point here on an actual coordinate grid I need to put axis CS at the start okay and then actually I'm just going to open and close that because I've already defined my um, node to be the origin there. So if I actually recompile that, let's see what we get. Okay, so there you go. So basically you can see my ticks, which are 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, on the x-axis, and 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16 on the y-axis, which again I've got those defined. And you can just see that that origin position is being marked down here okay but you also notice that I've got time and size up here and again I can change the positioning of that time and size just by changing the anchor position so the reason why it's northwest is because it's on the northwest of the top of the y-axis and the reason why it's southeast is because it's on the southeast of the tip of the x-axis okay so the last thing I'm going to show you to do in this video is how to actually add a plot so I'm going to use the command add plot or one word and I'm just going to put in uh, square brackets what the domain of this plot is because I may not necessarily want it plotted for the entirety of my x um, domain or my y domain so if I just change my domain I go domain equals I put it in curly brackets and I want to change my domain to only go from 0 through to 5 so the point x equals 0 through to the point x equals 5 because obviously that's my domain and then after that I'm just going to put a set of curly brackets and I'm actually going to type what my function is I want to plot so in this case, I'm going to plot 2 to the power of x. So you notice this is the function that I'm going to plot. I'm going to plot it over the domain 0 to 5, and it's going to appear on this axis here. So if I just recompile that to show you, you can literally see that command, that plot has now been plotted. Okay, so that's 2 to the power of x being plotted on this grid. I've defined what x and y ticks I want plotted, and I've got my time and my size. So I've got my x and y axis labels there. I can also change other things about this plot. For example, I might want to make it a red plot. Okay, that might be quite funky. So if I just change red in my parameters, again, that will change to red. I might also want to make the width of my line different. So I could just go line width equals, I don't know, let's say 0.4 millimeters. And again, separate my parameters with a comma. If I recompile that, I get something like the following. Okay. Now, just the last thing which I want to show you, um, sometimes it can be quite useful to have, for example, a grid um, in here. So if I come to actually where it says PGF plot set, if I use a comma and if I just go grid equals both, in other words, I want a grid on both the X and Y axis. Basically, what this is going to bring in is a grid which is going to be at the X ticks, which I have defined. If I don't define any X or Y ticks, then it will just bring it in every one by default. But because I've actually defined my X ticks to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and my Y ticks to be 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16, if I recompile that, it will basically bring in a grid which corresponds to each of my ticks. Now, just last thing, you notice that these, um, these are quite big, particularly these ticks are quite big, particularly sort of down here where one and two kind of look on top of each other. And you also notice that they're on top of the grid position. So what I can actually do is add an extra parameter. So I can say tick label style equals, and if I open and close my curly brackets, because I want to define a couple of styles here. First of all, I'm going to make the font slightly smaller. So I'm just going to go tiny in here. So font equals tiny. And that should basically make the font of the ticks a little bit smaller. Okay, as such, that looks a little bit better. The other thing which I want to do is actually make sure that they stand out from the grid lines at the back. So I'm going to use a comma, and I'm just going to go fill 
equals white. And what that literally is going to do is just put a white background on each of these ticks and it should basically make them stand out a little bit more from the grid. Okay. And obviously you notice that it's very easy to plot graphs now because you literally just need to change this down here. For example, if I want to change this to x squared, you can see x squared has been plotted on the right hand side as such. Obviously, if I want to add on something like two times x, notice that if it needs to be add on two x, you can't just type two x, you need to type two times x. So use that star. But again, if I just recompile that, I can pretty much plot whatever I like over there on the right hand side. 